we'll open the planning board meeting. Um, I don't know if we have a, uh, I don't know if we have a flag or not. I have one. Okay. All right, B. <laughs> all right. We, um, we'll rise for a uh, pledge to the flag, please. <clears throat> Okay. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America, America and, and, to and to the Republic for which it stands, stands one nation, one nation God, God, indivisible, indivisible liberty, 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 justice, and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Um, can we have the secretary perform a roll call attendance, please? Mr. Saru? Here. Mr. Frino? Here. Mr. Paratikos? Mr. Paratikos? Mr. Marinaccio? Here. Mr. Maselli? Mr. Maselli? Mr. Flower? Here. Okay. So Sweet. wait, how many do we have? Three? Okay. We, we have, have Saru, Frino. Oh, we have Saru. Okay. Yeah, we have uh -huh. four. Marinaccio, Flower. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We have four. So we we had Nick on earlier. I don't know. What I was going to say, he was on earlier, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he was on. I don't know. Um, just check my phone here. Let's... Yep, no, he said he didn't text me, so I don't know if he's having any problems or not. Okay, all right. Well, hopefully he'll uh, hopefully he'll log back in. All right. So our first item this evening is the acceptance of the meeting, the minutes from the January fourth, twenty twenty one meeting. Uh, can we get a motion? I'm, I'll make that motion. Okay, motion to accept. Do we have a second. Second. Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Okay. Record show all members voted aye. All right. Um, okay. Our next item on the agenda is an adjourned public hearing for Gasland Petroleum on Route 9D. Um, let me just ask council a question. Do we need to open this or can we just adjourn this to a date certain? We still uh, open it. We need to open it. When? I didn't, Paul, I didn't hear you. Did you, you have, we to have to open it and adjourn it, further adjourn it. Right, but we don't have to open it and then close it, correct? No. No, that's what I thought. Okay. All right. So in regard to the gas lamp petroleum, um, we're going to adjourn the public hearing until April 5th, 2021. We'll get a motion to we, do so. We still have to open it, Bruce. We still have to open it. I thought just Paul just said we didn't have to open it. No, you have to open it and then just adjourn it. You don't close it. Though. Okay. All right. Okay. So we need the motion then to open the public hearing. I'll make it. Second. Matt. Okay. Motion's made. We have a second. Okay. Motion made. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Need a motion to move the public hearing to April 5th, 2021. I'll make that. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Okay. Motion Aye. passed. Do we have a motion to close the public hearing? I'll make no, it. No, no, no. We're not closing it, Bruce. Oh, closing sorry. It. Sorry. Yeah, correct. We adjourned it. Right. We adjourned the public hearing. Sorry. All right. So we're good on that. Our next item on the agenda is. Um, Actually, Tarpon Towers. 
Okay, we have on here that we close the public hearing. I'm kind of confused on this one. I think we, there... When we are adjourning the scoping session, we had closed the public hearing, right. and then we had a public hearing for the scoping, and at okay. that point is when it went into litigation. Okay, so this was for scoping. Okay, so you got a motion, I guess, to open the public hearing for the scoping session for Tarpon Towers 2 LLC wireless communications facility. I'll make that. No, 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 no. Chair, you just have to adjourn the uh, item out. Uh, we're still waiting for the applicant to provide uh, the scoping document. Okay. Just for control purposes, the planning board can just adjourn this matter uh, to, until it's April 5th meeting. Okay, so we get a motion to adjourn to April 15th on this. I'll make that motion. All right. Second. 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 Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? All right. Motion carries. All members voted aye. Okay. Our next item on the agenda this evening is Smith Three Lot Subdivision for a public hearing. We have a motion to open the public hearing for this project. I'll make it. Okay, motion's made. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, hearing none, motion carries. So at this time, do we have the um, we have the applicant or the applicant's engineer on with us tonight. Uh, this is Andrew Bolson uh, with Larry Podge's office. We're the applicant's engineer. Okay. Um, I guess it's a little awkward tonight because um, we don't have the actual way to, I guess, to present it. Um, if you I wanted to, you wanted can, to sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, Andrew. I was just going to offer to share my screen if you guys want to look at the project, uh, if that's yeah, possible. If you, yes, it is possible. So if you, if, um, we can get the, um, get Tom, Tom. to allow you to share the screen and then you give us a brief yep. description of the project. Andrew, whenever you're ready, go ahead. Sure. Sorry about this, bear with me a second. This is a new computer for me. The computer actually crapped out today. So bear with me a second. You don't need it now. And now. Okay, can everybody see that? Yes, we can.
Okay, so this is um, an existing uh, four acre, approximately four acre parcel on the corner of Old Hopewell Road and uh, Losey Road. Um, the owner wants to divide the lot into three separate lots, um, two one acre lots and a third uh, two acre lot where the existing structure will remain. Um, then we're proposing two homes, uh, both for children on that, uh, those two new lots. Um, the sizes uh, were based on just the, um, the client preferences. Um, we're also proposing to connect each home to uh, the existing uh, uh, town sewer in the area. And uh, we're proposing wells on each lot. Um, no, unacceptable. Yeah, that, that, that's pretty much it for, for okay. the topic. So, um, oh, just we, want to mention. Like, all the well, water. There's somebody else talking. It's only, okay, we only have the applicant talk at this point in, during the meeting. We'll open up for public comment uh, as soon as we get done with the um, the engineer presenting his uh, his application. Okay, um, go ahead, Andrew, you finish what you were saying? I just, yeah, I just wanna mention that we uh, met with Barbara and Susan from the town um, uh, on a comment from the first meeting um, regarding the carriage house and it is the applicant's app, uh, intention to, to abandon that uh, in the proper manner so that it's rendered uh, uninhabitable. So uh, the, client, the, the applicant is in the process of doing that. Um, and so we'll be taking care of that and that will be reflected on our next submission as well as all the other comments from the, the town engineer, the town planner and, and others. So that's pretty much it. Okay. All right. Um, okay, before we open up for public comment, I don't know if the, um, uh, if the planner or the engineer had any um, concerns that needed to be addressed uh, with the next submission that, that we didn't have at the last meeting? No, as far as, uh, as far as engineering, um, you know, comments, they were relatively, you know, minor. So I guess we'll just go wait until uh, Andrew makes his resubmission. Okay. Um, that is, that's true as well for the, the planning okay. letter. All right, thank you. Okay, so at this point, um, I would like to go ahead and um, open to for public comment at this time. Um, if there's anybody that wishes to speak, um, did they raise their hand, I guess? They're um, For the uh, the person that was on the phone, they would they would have to hit star nine to raise their hand. Okay. There he is. Who, who was that person that was on there? Uh, I I don't have a name. I a name on asked it? him to unmute. You can hit star six to unmute. Okay. Uh, hello. He's... Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yes, yes, I guess you had, you had a question um, or you had a comment regarding this project. My name is Darlene Appel, owner of the property exactly behind this. This is for Susage Place, Wappingers Falls. Okay. Uh, exactly behind my fence where that this property is, is my... 16 by 32 in the ground pool. There is woods and trees, which denotes the privacy, which is 
what the purchase reason for buying this property was for. Um, the wells here, mine is shallow, is only 87 feet. It will draw water away from that as it is that this house, I stagger the usage of the water when that I don't do dishes and laundry and everything all at the same time. Um, I have a submersible pump, 87 feet. The way that these houses were designed is that the wells were put in first and then the houses many years ago were put in after. So my house, you can't even put a well again because my house is too close to the apparatus that would even be necessary to dig a new well. This project would totally compromise my water. I'm afraid that with all that construction and building, my pool, we, we just put a brand new liner, so almost $7,000. There's all stone. My privacy will be affected. And uh, I, I object to, to this as far as that we were told at the purchase of this property from many years ago, when that my parents purchased this property first, we were told that that was an estate, a one family dwelling in that as well. All state, I have to pay extra for my house insurance even because this property borders an estate, which enhances the property value. Also included in the possibility there's heavy rock there could be blasting that would compromise the body of my pool. I object to this completely object. Okay. Um, all right. We have your concerns on the record and we will have the applicant address the concerns. Um, okay. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak on behalf of this application? Uh, David has his hand raised. Okay. Hi. Hi, David. Can you give us your name and address for the record, please? Yeah, my name is David Baskin, um, son of uh, Phyllis Baskin, who lives at uh, 13 Mosey Road, uh, also adjacent to Lot 3. Okay. Um, so I guess I have some concerns also about tree removal um, with this plan. I, I don't see any discussion that I could find on that. Um, flood prevention, I think right now, our house does flood when it rains and, and I, I would like to, I'm concerned that that will be even worse with, with tree removal that I think is likely to be done with this plan. Um, so yeah, and also changing to how much to, uh, is the grade of the land going to be changed by this and um, yeah, I guess I'm also concerned about the big house in lot three that is, is planned to be very close, it looks like, to, to our property. Okay. Um, okay, we will have the applicant then address the, the concerns that you brought up to us. Um, is there anyone else who wishes to speak on behalf of this application? Okay, if there is no one else, um, I guess we will, if there's no one else, I guess that at this point, um, we'll need the engineer to, I guess, address the concerns. Um, uh, Bruce, um, Nick Ward sent a chat says, can you confirm Gasland application was adjourned? I am the applicant's attorney, but I just noticed it was not indicated on the agenda as being adjourned. Thank you. Okay. Yes, so we did adjourn that. Um, if you can let him know that was adjourned to uh, April, the fourth, uh, April the 5th. Thank you. Thank you. We had requested that it be adjourned to the March meeting. Was there a reason you're not able to adjourn it to March? 
we we've already gone beyond this already. Um, he was no, nobody had reached out to us to discuss this, and we haven't received a resubmission yet either. Okay, I apologize. I had spoken with B and requested to March, and I thought that was clear, so I apologize. We do have a resubmission coming. Would I could I ask the board to reconsider and adjourn us to March because we have our submission ready for that? Um, well, uh, Bruce, um, maybe I can hop in here just for a second. Um, yeah. Nick, um, one of the things we discussed in our uh, agenda meeting earlier was that um, that it would be better if we had uh, some time to review the newest um, submission um, before before we open it back up to the public. Uh, so this way we can have a chance to go you know through it and discuss it amongst ourselves. Uh, you know, on, we understand are some fairly, fairly significant changes. So we thought that it would be a good idea to take an extra extra month uh, before we open it up again to any. Um, no, get that, get that, Finney. I see, okay, thank you. Uh, but then I presume we can appear at your March meeting to explain to you the changes. Yes, I think that, that would be the best thing. We can have a discussion on a, the second meeting in March um, and then we can go ahead which would be, I believe, March the 15th. Um, if they get the submission in on time for that, then we can go ahead and uh, right. public hearing. That makes we perfect can... sense, and I apologize. Thank you okay. for that That's clarification. All right. It's all right. Thank you. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll Thank leave you. your meeting then. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We have to go back to this uh, other item we were just discussing. Okay. Apologies. Thank you. All right. Bye -bye. All right. Um, okay. Back to the... Uh, <laughs> the Smith three lot subdivision here. Um, all right, so I, I guess we have a couple of comments that were that were brought up by the um, by the two neighbors. So if we can get the applicant to address both of those items and address the concerns uh, for the uh, the planner and the engineer, I guess we can go ahead and uh, adjourn the public hearing to a future date. We have um, the applicant still on, on the line yeah. with us? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. So, so uh, I'll, I'll address some of these concerns quickly, but they're all noted and uh, we'll be looking at them for the next submission. Um, just quickly on the privacy, uh, it was noted in the last meeting about screening, uh, at least between the lots. Um, so we actually wanted to bring that up. Uh, there's a, quite a good amount of vegetation on the, the lot right now. Um, and it's really not our intent to, to have them clear any more than necessary for the, for the homes. So, um, I mean, we would like to maintain privacy both for our, our like the owner as well as uh, the adjacent property. So that's definitely on our, on our radar. Um, Regarding the uh, grading, there, there's not significant grading changes planned. Um, I understand the concern regarding uh, the flooding um, of uh, the property to the north's uh, home. I understand that concern with the clearing of trees, but again, there's not much grading change and not much uh, clearing of trees planned. So um, I don't think our project would be particularly impactful on that particular concern. Um, and then again, the, the, last, the last comment from Ms. Appel um, regarding the water, um, that that's understood. There's actually a, a concern from the health department regarding water quality. Um, so that, that's in the works as well. We're, we're gonna be in, in contact with the health department regarding um, uh, you know, the, the well, the proposed wells on our property and um, uh, potential expansion of uh, water districts. I mean, if there's a, if there's a widespread issue with water service in that area, I'm not sure if, um, if uh, what the, the, the next step for that would be, but um, we're definitely looking at, at all those concerns already. So, but we appreciate you bringing them to uh, our attention as well. Okay. No, no problem. As long as we get uh, we get these items addressed, uh, that's the most important thing. 
Um, just again, just look at the screening though, just to make sure, I mean, obviously what's there um, and then possibly if it's needed, maybe you may want to propose some type of, um, some type of evergreen or something in there to kind of fill in a little bit. Right. Uh, Andrew, do you mind if I ask you a question? Sure, go ahead. So looking at the plans now, it looks like you've got a dark red dashed line that represents your area of disturbance. That's correct. Um, our assumption was that there would be a, a certain degree of clearing within the area of disturbance. But if you're proposing to retain uh, elements of the area of disturbance, can you identify those on the plan? Um, so, I mean, our limits of disturbance really were just for grading changes. And then, of course, for the, the driveways and home pads, as well as the wells. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I understood that much of it, but I assumed that if you were regrading the area of disturbance, that that would include clearing of the existing vegetation. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, for sure. That That's what I was trying to say, I think, um, in response to that comment about the grading and uh, the clearing, as far as the, the flooding of the neighboring property's basement, um, that that our, our clearing would be limited to that that area of disturbance. It it was not we don't intend to go beyond that in any way so i mean and if if there's existing vegetation between our proposed lots as well as on the lot lines that exist that are existing we intend to to keep that as much as possible so i'm not sure if that answers your question but i think for the most part it it looks like between Lot two and the backyard of lot three, there would be some vegetation to remain outside of the area of disturbance. That looks good. As far as the big house on lot one, looking into the front yard of, of lot two, less of an issue, uh, certainly, but we defer to the planning board in regard to that matter. Okay. Well, I have a suggestion too. Um, you know, Andrew, um, maybe you can talk to uh, your, your client and um, look at some reasonable areas, you know, for lawns for the houses, but then actually show um, lines on the map in, re, um, in regards to um, existing uh, vegetation that's going to uh, remain. So this way, you know, it's on, you know, the plan, you know, it's clear so that when the lots are like developed, that uh, there's not supposed to be any, um, you know, clearing in some of these uh, specified areas. Okay, sure. Yeah, we can do that. And then also, um, I know the one resident brought up about, you know, flooding, but we, uh, one of our comments was that, um, uh, look into taking other roof leaders from the houses and putting them into a uh, underground recharge um, system, just because that, that area does um, flow down onto the neighbor's lot in the front there. Right, yeah. Actually, thanks for bringing that up, Pete. And then- um, You were looking at that, so. Um, if you're talking to the health department, had they, had they uh, as far as the wells, they talked about a test well? Uh, not that I recall. I don't think that they brought that up in our conversation, but. Okay. All right, because I know usually with a subdivision and I don't know one uh, that's as small as this, but usually if they're, you're proposing like wells, they typically will require um one i believe it's one test well for every four you know lots so i would think that they would want you to drill one of these like wells uh, and test it for quantity and quality okay um but that's something you'll have to go talk talk to them about and um uh regarding the one neighbor's concern about potential um quantity issues uh i mean this is something between you and the adjacent property owner uh but if you were to make an agreement with the property owner where during you know the pump test for the well that you drill for health department purposes that the uh, adjacent owner uh was uh, amenable to you monitoring or having you know the well the well driller uh monitor you know her well for potential um drawdown during you know the test i mean that's one thing you could you know consider but again that's something that the health department would also talk to you about Okay. That was it. Okay. 
All right. So, um, Andrew, how, how long? Oh, excuse me. Hello? Yes. May I speak, Darlene Appel again? May, may I speak? Yes, yeah, state your name again. Darlene Appel, owner of Four Susage Place. Okay, go ahead. When Whitegate, when Whitegate drilled their wells, there was a drop in the wells from the former owner as well, which now that that house was just sold on the corner. There, there was drop in the wells. There was. Okay. And that was from across. And as well, too, I want to say quickly is that I was always warned from my pool where that the diving board side is, which is the side closest to Old Hopewell, is that there is an underground stream or brook that pushes up against the wall of my pool back there. Okay. I was told that by the pool company that there was an that I was always to watch the liner because it, that that issue arose when that it was um, during a liner replacement and they said that the possibility that there was um, an underground brook stream that they they said would would push on that wall and that too I mean if you're going to go digging back there you have to find out if, if that there you know where where that brook or stream where where that water is going to go because i know that it's there mr massey sam massey across the street is very well versed in this property because he's an original owner from 50 years ago okay well we'll have we'll have the the there, engineer We'll have their uh, look into this. Um, uh, yes, please, because I can't. I can't have my property devalued because uh, uh, over this. I just recently lost both my parents. This was their house. I now am the only owner of this property. I I cannot have my property devalued in any way. I will not. I I will not allow it to happen. I will not allow that to happen I, I cannot allow that to happen okay so, I'm sorry I know the adamacy in my voice or whatever but I'm sorry I just buried both my parents and it just kind of we just kind of got here and put this house in our name now in, in my name at this point okay well we will have the I, I'm, I'm not I'm, I'm not I, I'm, I'm extremely upset extremely okay well, the concerns that you brought up, we will have the engineer for the project address them. And then they'll be brought up at a future meeting, um, which we will Well, discuss. I receive, I'm sorry, sir. Well, Please. before we, we have to, before we close the public hearing for this evening, we will, we will have a date to adjourn this too. Um, I just need to speak with the engineer again here to see what his time frame is. Okay. All right. So, Andrew, um, will I be notified by a certified letter like I was this time also? No, you won't. You won't. It'll be it'll be put on the agenda. Um, the agenda is posted on the town's website. Um, but before we before we end this portion of the meeting, we will have the date um, so that you will know when they're going to come back, uh, so that the public hearing will be reopened at that date. All righty, thank okay. you. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, okay, before before I jump back to you, Andrew, I just want to, um, to the rest of the board members who are on here tonight, uh, are there any other board members that uh, have any questions or concerns that they want to bring up to the applicant at this point in time? Okay, so hearing none, um i'd like to make a comment okay yeah go ahead ralph um on the clearing part of this are they are we going to subject to them to um put up greenery around this property or just along that one border 
Uh, we we can if we feel that there's a if there's a necessity for it. Well, I just don't want to incur more expense to these people because the construction alone is very expensive. So if they leave a small border of whatever's originally there without adding more trees to this cost. I believe Malcolm was alluding to the fact that having them try to leave as much of the natural vegetation as possible, um, you know, in that, in that area where it borders up to the other neighbors. Mm -hmm. um, that's what, to, yeah, that's what Andrew had been alluding to and, and, but they're not going to say, the, yeah, they're not clearing the whole property anyway. No, no, just the area of disturbance, just that dark red dashed line on the site plan. That's, that's fine. But we need, but we need to make sure that um, they note that because if there isn't, then, I mean, if they did decide, which you know, like I doubt it, if they did decide to clear cut it, we wouldn't have any um, uh, you know, enforcement if there weren't you know, like limits shown on the approved plan. So yeah, that's I don't a very think good we point. need to restrict them to that. What if they decide that they want to clear their lot? Well, that's that's I mean that's up to you know the planning board. I mean if I mean if you if if, if uh, I don't think we should put a restriction on that. Again, that's a that's a planning board you know decision. Yeah. Okay. Well, Ralph, if you I mean if you feel that um, you know restricting the clearing, but at the end of the day though. Um, we could ask them to put a note on there to put planting in. They can put some type of um, evergreens along the back of the property if needed in order to facilitate the screening issue between the neighbors. I would also say that a, a restriction on clearing within the area of disturbance would go a long way to preventing flooding on neighboring properties. Right, exactly. I was you know, thinking about that myself, Malcolm, right before uh, yeah, if know. they decided, you know, if not that they would, but if they decided to clear cut the property, it might cause other issues. Yes, no, that, that definitely would help. Well, yes, and if they're, if they're able to retain vegetation to a reasonable extent, that would help. It would go a long way towards keeping neighboring properties from, from having those issues. Well, that also depends on grading if they're going to clear cut it and to regrade it. Well, they're not proposing too much, you know, um, too much grading because uh, right. except, for, except for right around the houses. Correct. There's not too much. Yeah, you know. I would I would be curious even how much of the area of disturbance they would need to clear cut at all. Yeah. Um, I guess depending on the cool. grading. I guess we have to wait to see what they propose. Yeah. Okay, let's see what they say. Okay. All right, so, um, so Andrew, uh, question comes in is how long do you feel you need to um, address the comments um, of both the planner, the engineer and the public comment because it looks like we're going to go ahead and we're going to have to adjourn this out to a um, future meeting. Um, so I would say hopefully by, I'm not sure if there's a, a meeting scheduled for the middle of March, but that would be our goal. If not, um, first meeting in April uh, would be the, the goal, I think. Okay. Um, question for... Uh, for B uh, would be is what would be the submission date for the uh, March 15th meeting? Sorry, yeah, February okay. 16. I was <laughs> muted. <laughs> yeah. So, so what was that date again? February 16th. February the 16th. Okay, and what about the um, then the April the April fifth meeting? Will be March first. March first. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so Andrew, um, knowing the submission dates, which 
of the two meetings would you be looking to come back? Um, Do you think you would be able to meet the February 16th? I think we could, we could potentially, yeah, I think we could do that. You think you could do that? Okay. So if you could meet the, uh, the February 16th submission date, um, I guess we can go ahead and adjourn the public hearing to uh, March 15th. Um, so at this time, get a, uh, looking for board members, if we get somebody to make a motion to- I'll move that. Okay, to adjourn the public hearing to March the 15th. So we have a uh, motion by Paul. Second. Uh, second by Ralph. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, any opposed? Okay, so all members voted aye. So we're going to adjourn to March the 15th. Thanks everybody. Okay, you're welcome, thank you. All right. Okay. Um, our next item on the agenda this evening is discussion uh, regarding the site plan and special use permit for Downey Energy liquid propane storage. Uh, do we have the applicant on with us this evening? We have uh, Mr. Capelli. Okay, did you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Okay, great. All right. So I guess uh, it's been a while since uh, this application has uh, uh, been in front of us. Um, so I guess you've been working on uh, some things uh, during the interim? Yes, with the DEC primarily. So, so uh, fundamentally, the project remains the same in terms of the two 45,000 gallon uh, LP above ground tanks and the small little service building, uh, 1800 square feet. What has changed is um, we moved them further back off the road to facilitate uh, additional uh, stormwater drainage and, and meeting the criteria of uh, the, the DEC's wetlands in their buffer. The wetlands are across the street and um, our engineer and our wetlands consultant have been working with the DEC to work out everything that needed to be worked out. And as a result, um, again, fundamentally, everything is exactly the same. Uh, it's just that we're moved off the site and our little uh, uh, pond area, detention area, whatever you want to call it, in the front of the property uh, uh, became larger. Um, and so, which is represented in the latest set of plans. So, for all intents and purposes, I believe those are the only um, those are the only significant changes. Okay. Um. All right. Uh, you did receive the uh, the current letters from both uh, the planner and the engineer. Yes, sir. We did. Okay. We don't. Uh, I don't think there were any. In my opinion, I don't think there were uh, any major issues. I see that uh, in Malcolm's case, for some reason, the lighting plan never got down to uh, um, got down to him which we subsequently sent to him after the memo, uh, not expecting a review. Um, I think um, uh, Malcolm and Pete both had a comment about meeting with Mike Sheehan, which was a previous comment Pete had many, many months ago. And, and we've since uh, many, many months ago met with Mike and walked the site with him and walked the um, the frontage there and explain to them the methods of the madness of the two driveways, an ingress driveway and an egress driveway. And um, I don't know if we have anything on record, but he had no problem with what we had proposed uh, 
uh, from that point of view. Um, getting to some of Pete's other comments, uh, you know, we've done deeps, we've done perks. Uh, I'd have to check with my engineer to see if he made a submission for the uh, to the health department, but that's uh, that's in the works since um, since the last time. The minimal septic system we need for that small little service building, um, and Troy, our engineer, and Mike Nowicki have been diligently working out whatever they needed to work out with the DEC. Okay. Um. All right. I guess um, in earlier discussion, I guess we did have a couple of things from the planner. Um, uh, Malcolm, if you want to kind of go over the, the issue you brought up earlier about the, um, I guess it was the exit turning radius, um, whether or not that needs to be addressed or not. Yeah. So um, as far as um, the lighting and the traffic, which as you as you mentioned in our letter was going to come later um as far as the lighting plan you specify on your lighting plan it it, it looks like the fixture that you are identifying on your lighting plan is um at a color temperature of 4000 kelvin we would ask that that be reduced down to 3000 kelvin other than that your lighting plan looks good um we did have a traffic comment which is that it looks like the proposed exit extends beyond your uh, property line. Okay. And you would need to revise your site plan so that your proposed exit does not extend past, this is to the south, extending south past your property line. Okay. So is, is that the, the, um, the curbing that you're alluding to or? Yeah, that, uh, you know, all of that improvement that would be associated with that turn radius. Okay, I don't see it encroaching the property line. I mean, it's at least on the, the plan I'm talking about, but we can, we can talk about that. If that had to be um, modified, I suppose we can, we could take a look at that. On the north side, it doesn't look like the, su the south side is encroaching any more than uh, the, the north side's radius. Um, I mean, neither one of them are going into the adjacent property. Um, I don't think, but maybe it's something we should we can talk about. That's that's not a problem. I can put you in touch. I can put you in direct touch with our traffic consultant. Sure, not a problem. How does that sound okay? That's perfect. So I will arrange that, Bruce. In the the follow up of this meeting, I'll put him in touch with uh, Michael Galante, and they can sort out uh, a solution. Okay. All right. That'd be great. Other than that, regarding the um, planning letter, um, there are a few items that we would like you to, a few clerical items that you would, we would like you to take care of. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, I don't think any of them would require revision to the layout. Uh, just things like uh, the distance between the bollards. Which is Malcolm noted on the plans on S3, I believe. It shows them at six feet on, on center uh, on your site plan there. However, that's incorrect uh, and they should be four feet on center. So that's an oversight on my part, but it is on the plans, but that'll be uh, amended in, in any case to be four feet on center anyway. And that's a not- You said a, that was on sheet S3? Yes, three. To the upper right of the tanks there there's oh no i see it now yes yeah, no problem yeah um, but you're saying that that is four feet as opposed to it's, six it's, no, it's going to be four feet yes yeah, six okay. feet, um uh was re reduced to four feet it has been four feet actually uh per our consultants that some of you may or may have uh, met jody amadin who's working with us uh, on the lp requirements so to speak okay so, our other comment was regarding um, the landscaping. Can you talk to me a little bit more about the switchgrass? You you identify 80 plantings, but I don't see a location. And you also identify the mix, the seed mix for general okay. grass. So, so our, our engineer did that, Malcolm. I'm, uh, I'm going to have to apologize. And I'm a little ignorant as to what the method to his madness was there as part of the, the um, um, the drainage component, his little detention pond that was part of 
of what he was trying to package out there with the vegetation in that depression there. So I would sure. defer to him and okay. we can certainly have him back to you in terms of clarifying where they are and, and, and again. Yeah, no, I, I love the plan in theory of that planted bioretention area. I was just curious for a little bit more information. That's perfect. That's um, I think that summarizes my comment memo. Pete, do you have anything? Uh, yeah, I mean, we had some uh, technical comments in regards to the drainage, uh, which we can work with um, uh, Al's engineer, uh, Troy, on uh, directly. Um, Al, the only other thing, and I, uh, you may have already, already mentioned it in your opening um, you know, remarks, but have you made a submission yet to the DEC? Um, I believe Mike has. Um, I know I saw uh, uh, many weeks ago applications that I get CC'd on. And again, I, I, I apologize for not knowing uh, exactly what they're doing. So I, I kind of uh, let them take the lead, so to speak, uh, in, in that regard. But I saw all kinds of uh, applications, paperwork, and things of that nature. So uh, I believe that's already taken place. All right. Could, um, could we? I can, I can get you in, into that loop as well. Yeah, I think I think that it would be good for the town to have um, you know copies of uh, whatever correspondence is going back and forth with them. Not a problem. Not a problem at all. That's fine. So that I mean, again, I'm not going to go through uh, you know our technical comments. I think those are things that we can work out um, you know directly with their engineer when they're ready. That's fine. Okay. It, if I can, uh, uh, Bruce, I, I, uh, I see on one of Pete's comments about the Fire Prevention Bureau uh, requiring involvement. And I believe, although not recently, that's uh, yourself, Howard Prager, the chief of, of, of the local fire department, perhaps other personnel in the town have been contacted. We, 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 we did discuss um, um, certain a training methodologies and what have you with uh, Jody Amadin. Um, and of course, that'll be that'll be put into place. Um, and uh, just to answer that and, and just to bring that forth that that's we you know, we we understand uh, that that's all part of the, the process here. Okay, all right. I just um, yeah, I just want to make sure that the fire department is in the loop on this. Um, I know there was the addition of the um, you know, of the tank. And um, I'm not sure about a fire department connection to the tank, how that's going to work. I don't believe that was shown on the plan. Okay, we'll find, we'll, we'll clarify that. And, um, and to answer again, one of without going into particular detail to, um, uh, to answer or to discuss one of Pete's other comments, I believe he, he questioned the 30,000 gallon berry tank that is not for a suppression system right. per se on site. It's for a, a Siamese connection yep. for the local fire department, et cetera, et cetera. So yep. just to clarify that. Yep. Yeah, yep. we went over that earlier tonight in our agenda meeting. With okay. Yep. yep, thanks. Okay, so um, all right. So we, as long as we have that in, in process, we're good there also. Okay. Well, if I could, uh, Bruce, um, one thing quick though, Al, um, one thing that we did, um, talk about is uh, it'll just have to be detailed on there in regards to how the uh, fire department's going to draw water from that, whether it's going to be through a, a hydrant or some other like method. Now just have to be noted on there. Absolutely. 100%. And I think that's already been worked on by our consultant, Jody Amadin and, uh, and she probably right. wasn't in the loop this, this uh, recent submission here. So that's my, my bad, but uh, All right. We'll certainly have that on there for the next submission. Absolutely. Right. Thank you. Okay. okay. Uh, if there's going to be some sort of uh, off offsite connection to that or whatnot, we're going to need to talk about some type of easements. Um, so we're going to have to kind of see where those connections are going to be and who's going to utilize them because potentially we'll have to have some type of easement. Yeah, Paul, we, we, and it's been such a long time we talked about that, but I remember there was some discussion whether or not um, uh, when we did provide that, um, that, that connection, that fire hydrant or whatever, whether the town uh, would um, be allowed to use that 
in case there was a fire across the street in one of the houses. I believe we discussed it with the owner and he certainly didn't have any problems, but there may be some legal, um, something that needs to be done um, uh, to that regard. But I remember there was some discussion that that fire hydrant or whatever uh, that we were uh, uh, putting there is not just for us. I mean, it's there for us, but it's it's not limited to our use uh, entirely. So we can, however, with your office or whomever, put together, you know, whatever language or, that needs to be put together for that. That's fine. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought I misunderstood you. I thought you said that the tank, purpose of the tank was not for uh, your need on site. No, it is for our need on site, but it's not going to be on site per se. It's going to be out beyond and it's not going to be just for fire suppression like a sprinkler type of system it's going to be for a truck to hook up if you will so again uh, is the town um, allowed to use that fire connection outside the gates to fight a fire across the street absolutely 100 percent and we don't know how that's Okay. Gonna, yeah, we'll have to flush that out, and just we'll have to we'll have to render that down to to some type of agreement. Sure. Uh, so we can work on that. Not a problem. Okay. All right. Um. All right. So I mean, I guess that if. Is there anything else that we need to discuss regarding this project this evening? Um, does any of the any of the board members have any questions? Okay. All right. Not hearing anyone. Um, all right. So I have a question quickly before we move on. Um, Al. Yes. Is there any documentation as towards, uh, I guess, the, the, the wider implications of this, uh, any seeker analysis regarding um, this text change applied to other parcels in the town? I, be I, I believe when we went to the town board prior to coming to the planning board, that went on for many, many months. There was a series of analyses that that we undertook uh, and studies uh, this property versus other properties um, that we work with David on uh, mm -hmm. and, and the town board. Um, not that not that we would necessarily isolate this particular property as being an ideal location for this. No, uh, no, yeah, but I guess as far as the board, uh, if that is available, I would love it. To be included in the next submission just so that it is officially included in uh the board submission absolutely 100 percent. you should have it in your office but, but that's fine i'll get whatever document you know documentation you need in that regard 100 percent. perfect that's fine. yep absolutely. that way we just make sure that everyone has it because i do know the project's been a long, around for a long time and I'd, sure. I'd like to make sure it's all in the same place that's fine perfect i would like to ask mr uh, chairman I mean, I don't, I'm not so sure that any of these uh, uh, items that need to be taken care of are significant. In fact, we've, 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 our engineers probably taken care of 99% of these comments here. I would like to ask if, if we could possibly be put on an agenda uh, in March for a public hearing, um, because I'm not so sure, you know, any, anything else is going to come up that's going to, you know, significantly, um, alter the project. So I'd like to see if, if that's a possibility. Okay. Um, let me just, uh, Pete, uh, how do you, do you feel you have, there's enough information here to go to the public with, uh, for a referendum, um, to go for um, <laughs> a referendum public hearing? Yeah, yeah, not a referendum. I got other things on my mind. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I think so, unless uh, unless any of the board members, you know, think otherwise. But, uh, you know, the drainage, you know, the drainage items are just, you know, technical details. And as long as Al's, uh, I think is, if Al can provide the uh, planning office with the correspondence in terms of that they're in the um, DEC process. And so, I mean, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't see why we shouldn't get public comment. Okay. All right. 
but that's so just my nothing, opinion. But nothing holding back. The, all the open-ended stuff right now to DC wouldn't be an issue. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, and you feel the same way, Malcolm? Sorry, I was on mute. Yes, I, I, I think so. I think we can okay. move towards a public hearing and that Al's team will, will be able to, to answer the outstanding questions. Okay. Um, all right. Any of the any of the board members have any questions um, regarding this? I think I already asked once. No. No. Okay. I um, have to ask B. Do we in March? What do we have anything on for the March fifteenth meeting, other than the um, Smith three lot that we just adjourned? No. Uh, yes, you just put a discussion in the last meeting. What was it? Okay, Barbara. Broke up. Mr. Ward Willis asked you to put on March 15th a discussion for Gasland. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's, that's for discussion. I was going to say for a public hearing. Um, because right now that would be yeah. three things. That would be We'd three also, at John Smith, Smith three lots subdivision. Yes, now we have three things. Three things on the agenda for the March 15th meeting. Right. Um, okay. So Al, would, would the, the March 15th meeting um, be okay? Or do you think you'd be ready for something at another date. No, I think March 15 would be perfect, giving us two weeks to, uh, I mean, everything is taken care of pretty much, giving us a February 16th deadline to submit, uh, that gives us plenty of time. I, so I, I would very much like March 15th if we can. Okay. All right, so um, can I get a uh, motion to schedule a public hearing for the Downey Energy Liquid Propane Storage for March 15th? I'll make that motion. Okay, motion's made. Do we have a second? No. Is that you, Paul? Yes, it's me, B. Okay. Okay, so motion's made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Okay, any opposed? Okay, so let the record show all members voted aye. So we are set for March 15th. Thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. Have a good evening. You too. Okay. Our next item on the agenda this evening is Hudson Valley lighting uh, for an amended site plan. Uh, do we have the applicant on this evening for this project? This is Amy Bombardieri with Dane Stacosa, the engineer for the applicant. Okay, how are you doing this evening? I'm well, how are you? Good. Um, so I guess we're here this evening to discuss um, some tree felling on the property. Is that correct? Right, we need, yes, it's correct. We need to remove 16 trees before the end of March because of the potential for bats. So we're just looking for that. We're not, we're not looking to stump or we're just looking to cut the trees. Just looking to cut them and lay them down at this point. Um, Correct. Okay. Um, so at this point, um, we did have, um, unfortunately we had to circulate for lead agency uh, because it wasn't sent out uh, prior. Actually, Mr. Chairman, it was sent out in July. The Person from Mike Grosso from the DEC works in the environmental analyst division. And I don't know, he also claimed that there was no check sent with that package and the check had cleared. So I don't know if it's just a paper paper shuffle error. I don't know if they're working from home and he just didn't, wasn't in the system. I don't know, I don't, but I'm 99% sure it was sent. I mean, V had the cover letter. Yes, it was sent out of our office and I don't know what happened due to COVID, but it was sent. But I was asked to send it again. Yeah. I, okay. So I'm pretty did, sure he had it though, because that check cleared as well. 
I saw that as well, Amy. And when I when I saw it, I checked with B. Um, and B, you can confirm or deny this, but I didn't think that we had gotten a response from anyone else either. We had not. We had not. Okay. So so we so you B, you recirculated, so we should the 30 day window would be up on what date at this point? Oh, that was the 27th. Oh, I'll say April 5th. Is that right? No, I did on the 27th. March 1st should be it. Okay. Because it was the 27th January and the 27th February should. So I would say the March 1st meeting. Okay, so we, we should be able to declare ourselves lead agency at that meeting, uh, assuming there's no objection. I, Mr. Uh, Chairman, I, just because they lost a letter at the DEC, I don't think that we should be penalized for the thir additional 30 days. And only because we're under such a time crunch here, because those trees have to come down before the end of March. Our only concern, Amy, is that it wasn't received, or we don't have any evidence of it being received from anyone else. But you're saying that the check cleared at DEC, that that you have reason to believe that they received. Yeah, so this. I'm just going off of the, I guess, the response letter that you sent right. us from DEC that says that they did not. Right, but they also said they didn't receive a check that they did receive. So I think it was just a paper miss. Well, just informing, yeah. I mean, sent it back in July. Yeah, it was sent on July 7th. To the DEC? To yes. everyone. So everyone was circulated. I think our obligation is to send it to them. I, I mean, is there any reason to believe that that wasn't done? Our, our reason to believe that it was not circulated is that we have not received a response letter from anyone and that the response letter from DEC says that they did not receive it. The, the response letter from DEC was from a different department. And do you always receive a response? Usually they just let it go the 30 days, don't they? We usually get something from Dutchess County. That was our concern. We usually get something from a, a few of the different agencies, even if it is just. So that was sent to the town of uh, Wappinger Highway, um, Department of Health, DEC, and Dutchess County Planning on July 7th, 2020. I mean, it could have been the reason that we didn't get a response from anybody because it was during COVID and a lot of people were working. You know, that was my thought. So Yeah, that is also very yeah very realistic i mean we can we can confirm with a handful of these agencies make sure that they received it i think that that would be simplest given the time crunch yep okay well, I mean, I, I'll, I'll do that tomorrow i'll reach out to the health department planning and our own highway department that'd be perfect thank you v. thanks i mean when is the next planning board meeting march 1st Okay. Yeah, we're we're kind of stuck at this point to a March first approval because we we still need to vote upon um, the negative declaration, which uh, hasn't been prepared by the planner, and we also need to um, authorize the uh, engineer to provide an amount for a tree clearing um, for the uh, restoration bond to be posted. Um, which I saw that there was there was a number in the letter from CPL. There was an amount for the bond. Was there an amount in there? I didn't. Yeah, we did have. Yeah, yeah, we did have an amount in there. But um, if I can just hop in, one of the things we discussed on our uh, agenda meeting, um, Amy, I had, and I don't have the plans right uh, in front of me, but um, any of the trees that are proposed to be cleared, are they within uh, the uh, wetland buffer? Um, they are, they are, they are, yes, but we're not going to disturb anything. We're just going to cut them down. Uh, I mean, one of the things that we discussed is how can we do that if, uh, I believe, um, and I didn't see a copy of the letter, but, um, Malcolm said it was, there was an incomplete, um, application letter, um, and one of the things they wanted to see was uh, um, al alternatives. All right, so I resubmitted. Basically, we have to justify 
Well, first of all, it's not disturbance, right? So cutting a tree down is not disturbance. Yeah, so. but that's not the point. But if, but if, but if one of the you know, like alternatives, I mean, you know, like hypothetically, if they come back and say, well, you know, we like this other like alternative, or you know, we want you to do this, and it um, changes the plan that doesn't involve these trees, then the trees would have already been, you know, cut, cut down. So I, I, I don't know. It just so there, there is no, there is no feasible. There's, there's no, there's no alternative. This is the layout that they need for their price point and to provide the office space that they need for the employees that they're moving from California. So the alternatives were mitigative in nature. Uh, one of the options was potentially porous pavement in that area, but because of the heavy truck traffic, we can't really can't do that. Right, so we're we're that. ensuring that there's. Yeah, so that we're ensuring that there's no runoff leaving the paved area and entering the wetland. It's all being treated in the in the stormwater feature. So basically, it was a justification that we can't we can't have this project work if we have to change the layout. So how are you planning to move forward with DEC? Just explaining so I it submitted just that a, way. Basically, a narrative just. Yeah, and, and because it's in the buffer, it's not as it's obviously not as regulated as disturbing wetland. So uh, I haven't heard back other than them saying that they received it and they'll look it over. Yeah, I was curious about that because in their response letter, the subsection that talks about tree clearing suggests that they're happy with your tree clearing plan, that you're not cutting down very many trees and, and that you are not likely to disturb anyone. Um, but in total, they, they identified it as an incomplete. And so I wasn't sure how we were going to be able to authorize this permit without approval from the DEC. Okay, well, the, the, the approval from the DEC that we're seeking is, it's disturbing within the adjacent area, not, it's mm. not particular to, to tree clearing. This is, this is a, like one action that we just need to do before the end of March. So it's not that, it, their concern is the wetland, obviously, but they're not. Normally, they wouldn't look at a tree clearing permit. No, it's only it's only that it is connected to the wetland buffer disturbance. But correct, I guess the the hang up that we're having is that we need to have a seeker determination uh, before we can move forward with our permitting process, and. I understand that. Um, yeah, and so we're looking for, uh, I guess, an indication from the DEC that they are going to allow you to move forward before we issue that permit. Heaven forbid they don't, and you have to find an alternative, and these trees just get cut down. That's that's what we're concerned about. But I suppose that's also what the restoration bond is for. Right. Well, Paul, uh, what were you talking about earlier, Paul, in our agenda meeting about in terms of if they provide, uh, you know, a narrative or something about um, so, mitigation or can you repeat that? Right. So uh, for seeker for seeker purposes, it's, you know, this board's responsibility to identify potential significant, significant impacts. And as long as the applicant can then show that they are going to take certain mitigation members uh, mitigation uh, measures that are reasonable, then um, they can uh, they can they can determine what those mitigation member me measures are, and then uh, the board can issue negative declaration. We've identified the potential significant impacts. The applicant has provided uh, these mitigation members me measures, and they will be followed. So, and that would allow the the board to issue a negative declaration. And then they'll have to take those mitigation measures. And if they don't do them or they have to change them, then there's going to be a change to the plan. Um, Amy, did the, did the town receive copies of all your correspondence that you've had so far with uh, the DEC, your original? Yes, my response to, yes, my response to uh, Mike Rosso at the DEC went out on January 19th and the town was copied on that. Well, can I just can I just ask two follow up questions? So to me, it seems like there's two issues here when we're talking about from a seeker perspective for potential significant impacts, and that's one is the Indiana bat, 
And then the second part is the uh, wetland buffer. Uh, and that has to do more with the runoff from the impervious pavement or the disturbance of the area just outside the buffer. So those are essentially two separate issues, right? Am I, am I getting that correct? That's the way I see it. And so the board is going to say, okay, with regard to the meaning of that, the measure is either one, uh, you, you do your tree clearing during the period of time permissible, or two, there's some type of alternative that you can uh, re you can uh, suggest that would, would allow you to do it outside of that time period. So that's one issue, environmental purposes. And then the second issue is the the disturbance of the, uh, uh, the buffer area, but I mean, that can be determined later. We're not, we're not really addressing that easy right now. As long as we address it in the secret document, we provide some mitigation measures in there. I mean, I don't have a problem reaching out to Mike Grasso. I mean, if, 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 if the planning board wants, you know, I've dealt with him before on some other things. Um, he's a pretty like reasonable guy. Um, you know, I mean, if you want, you know, I could reach out to him and, you know, see, see how he feels about, well, I don't know. Like, I know what he, yeah, maybe he's going to say, hey, like, until we issue a permit, there shouldn't, there shouldn't be any work done, even if it's just, you know, felling a tree, because, you know, Amy's right, there's no physical disturbance, but I don't know. I mean, I know we want to try to help and move it along. Um, but I mean, ultimately, I worry about is ultimately, it's this board as the lead agency's determination as to what those those impacts are going to be and how they're mitigated. So, um, uh, you know, I, the, the DEC did not decide that they want to be lead agency. This board did. So, as long as this board is happy for secret purposes that those you know potential significant environmental impacts have been addressed, then yeah. this board's determination of whether or not they issue a negative declaration or not. And the Wait, Paul, isn't that complicated by the suggestion that some people at DEC may not have received the lead agency letter? Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I mean, B is stating that, well, first of all, let me just say this, B has stated that, that, that was circulated and, not, you know, to me, I believe that that's fine. We've, we've complied with our obligations if we send the letters. I mean, there's nothing in the law that states that, that, you know, there has to be actual receipt of those notices. It's just that the, the agency has to circulate them. And, uh, -huh. uh you know, I mean, it sounds like we can't really do anything as far as issuing negative deck, at least until the March meeting anyway, because we have to authorize it to be done. So at that point, we're going to, you know, we'll know whether or not they object to us being lead agency based on the fact that they're going to argue that we didn't send the notice. We'll know by March 1st. Mm -hmm. um, is there an, are there two meetings in March? Yes. Okay. The first and the fifteenth. Okay. Well, I, th yeah, I think our plan was to put this on for the first. I mean, which is pretty much a month away. Um, I don't know if there's possibility this all could get straightened out in between now and then. Um, I I I don't see that as being a problem. I'm just worried that if at the first meeting it's not taken care of, it just gets really close. I mean, arguably, how long does it take to cut down 16 trees? They could probably do it within 15 days, but I don't want to cut it that close if I don't have to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, why don't we put it on? I mean, we can put it on for the first, and I, I guess the board would have to authorize uh, authorize Malcolm to- Well, that's, yeah, that's what I was getting at. I mean, it, you know, I. I think that, you know, the board we discussed was to authorize, um, obviously, I guess the engineer has come up with a um, restoration bond amount, but um, we also need the uh, planner to um, uh, produce the negative declaration. So I guess if, if um, everybody can kind of work on it between now and the March 1st meeting to get it resolved, um, the issue also would go away with the lead agency also, because if we don't hear back from anybody by um, March the 1st, then you know we could also declare ourselves lead agency at that point also. Um, and then we could just move this, uh, you know, assuming everything gets resolved, we can just move it along for the tree clearing um, and approve it. 
So if nobody has any objections to that. No. Okay. But Bruce? Yep. Bruce, just keep in mind that they then have to go to the town board the week after uh, you the approve it, which is what happens, so that right. the town board can accept the bond before they cut the trees. Yes. But that would have, right. That's why I, I didn't want to see them get pushed out to the second meeting because that second meeting actually will push them back a further week um, to wait for the town board. Correct. So, right. So that's why Perfect. I to keep it on track for March the 1st um, so that we can approve it. And then on March the 8th, the town board can accept the bond. And then that would give you the approval to get the trees down by the end of the month. So just a question, does the planning board need to offer the approval before the town board accepts the bond? Is that yeah, right, set in stone or can we go to the town board? Right. The, the planning board has to approve has to approve the negative declaration and accept and the um, the bond amount. And then we refer it, then it's referred to the town board after us. Okay. Um, so if you feel that you could possibly work with, with the, um, you know, with the planner and engineer on resolving the DEC issue, um, and then they can present us with the, um, with the negative declaration for the March 1st meeting, we can go from there. Okay. okay. All right, so at this point, I need a, okay. right, I need a motion to authorize the uh, planner to prepare a negative declaration. I'll make that motion. Okay, do we have a second? I'll second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, aye. Um, it's uh, anybody opposed? All right. Hearing nobody's opposed, all members uh, voted aye for the um, negative declaration, and I guess we also uh, we also need to authorize the engineer to prepare an amount for a restoration bond for the March first meeting. I'll make that. Okay. Do we have a second? Yeah, I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. okay. Any opposed? Okay. Let the record show all members voted aye. So. We will put this off till March 1st and hopefully we can move forward from there. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Have a good evening. Have a good night. Okay. All right, our next item on the agenda this evening is LaBelle Properties LLC for site plan and special use permit. Um, do we have the applicant on this evening for the Mr. Chairman Al Roberts here I am the attorney for LaBelle Properties and Jared Van Benscoten can you hear me hi how are you doing this evening good we're doing well in this crazy weather um, yeah. this application requires a little bit of history as many of you know I was uh, attorney to the town of Wappinger for uh, 28 years when I left that position, I gave all my files to the town. Uh, Ernie Martin, uh, his firm for many years, uh, for about 25, 28 years, were the engineers to the town. Um, and both of us worked on this particular site uh, when SUNUP was um, seeking approval for the current use. Inexplicably, inexplicably, the site plan and application and the entire file that the town maintained is missing. Um, when the town picked up my files, of which um, the one I had on this particular uh, project, um, she could not locate them in the storage facility. Um, the, what we're trying to do here is come up with a template uh, to establish a, a, a ground base for what's been at, at the site since I would say, uh, well, the first approval was in 1998, as I recall, 
and the second approval for the additional parcels was somewhere around 2002 to 2004. And Ernie did the uh, some of the survey work for SUNUP when they did a lot reconfiguration in 2019, I believe. Um, for whatever reason, uh, nobody referenced the fact that this had a previous approval. And what we are trying to do is just establish a template for the reconfigured lot lines and to show what has been in use for in excess of 22 years, at least for a portion of the site. And Ernie, if you're present, uh, if you can add to what I've said, um, I would appreciate it, but uh, we're only trying to establish a, uh, a, a basis uh, for how, how the property is, has been used and was approved. Al, can I ask you a question? Yes. In, in one of the letters it indicated that somebody had found a copy of the site plan, and I'm assuming that's the site plan from uh, that 2002 to 2004 time frame. No, 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 no. Okay. There, there was a uh, the in, the initial site plan. I believe it was in 1998 or 99. Regrettably, I don't have my file in front of me because our office closed today. Um, but that was only a portion of the site. Uh, then. Um, SUNUP acquired other parcels of a land and they expanded the site uh, to include these additional pieces. And they were approved as best as I can determine around uh, 2002. Um, it it might have been three or four, but I know they were approved. Um, my secretary, who now works in your office, found the file number and the closed file number, which is at the town of Wappinger. So um, I, I don't have access to those files anymore. Um, and Ernie doesn't have access to his old firm's file because his firm merged with another engineering firm and they're in a state of flux. So, um, and I don't believe the engineer who originally handled the site plan um, is practicing any longer. I thought I read in one of the letters that we actually found a copy of it. That's not the case. There was a, a photocopy of the 1990, I believe it was 98 or 99 site plan, okay. which was only a portion, it was only one of the two parcels. Uh, subsequently, additional parcels were purchased. The site was expanded to its present configuration. Right. And so that that we, we were not able to find a site plan uh, from what you're referencing into 2002. That's correct. Uh, the town wasn't, and I don't have my files. The town of Wappinger does. Okay. The, the survey that you have before you is the configuration that the site has been in for approximately 20 years or for at least the first parcel and maybe 19 years for the second parcel. And it also takes into account the lot line reconfiguration that this board approved in 2019. And I'm assuming yourself and maybe Ernie would, would be able to give the town an affidavit to say that the condition of there was the same as was approved in that 2002 site plan? To the best of my recollection, I, I can. I think Ernie, Ernie, if he would speak up, um, I, I assume Ernie would. Yeah, I see there is a there's an Ernie on the uh, participant list. I'm not sure if that's Ernie Martin or not. Um, ask him to speak. 
Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Ernie, are you on the line? Is there a chance you can kind of unmute yourself? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Okay. I think I was on mute. Yes, I, I've been, I've listened, uh, but I can, uh, I'm, I'm willing to sign an affidavit to that effect. Yes. Okay. And so <clears throat> I, I'm kind of repeating some of what Al said, but again, the intent is to use this site as it's previously been used for 25 years or more. I mean, I don't see why we couldn't essentially do a, do a reapproval uh, of the uh, 2002 site plan um, with the new map and then maybe an affidavit from Al and Ernie uh, just indicating that the, that the uh, current condition of the property uh, was that at the time that it was approved in 2002 and essentially just treat it as an administrative uh, approval authorizing the chair to re-execute um, that original site plan or I mean that's the way I would see it there's really no changes there's nothing to approve um, so it's essentially just as you know an administrative reapproval that sounds sounds good to me I agree thank you Paul Al, I have a question for you. Was there was there any DEC permits that were uh, associated with this uh, parcel and uh, the use? I, to be honest with you, I just simply don't remember that. That would have been handled um, primarily through Dave Stolman's office, of which Malcolm is affiliated now. Um, I I would have only um, looked at it from you know, uh, reviewed the resolutions and right. what have you. But I distinctly remember reviewing this particular site. Um, yeah, all right. I'm not sure the town uh, back then um, involved the DEC as much as it subsequently did in the yeah, uh, I understand. You know, post 2000. Yeah. I mean, one of our comments was just, again, it's, uh, you know, the site, you know, has been there. It, uh, you know, it would be nice uh, if there was some kind of uh, erosion control practices that were implemented as they continue to use, you know, the site. So, I mean, I don't know if you guys are willing to put something on the map that says that the owner will attempt to, uh, you know, like employ. Uh, some best management, you know, practices in terms of uh, erosion control. Um, I don't know. That's why I was asking whether there was a DEC um, permit or not. I didn't even I didn't even look to see if there was a DEC wetland around there where this work was within the buffer or not. Um, so, my only issue with that, Pete, is is that it seems like that would kick it over to an amended site plan. Yeah. Uh, no, I know what you're saying. Yeah. We're, 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 we're trying to resurrect the dead. Yeah, no, I, it's very I understand. difficult. Yeah, no, I know there's been no violations at the site yeah. that I can remember. Yeah. All right. That's fine. I understand. Ernie, you have anything else to say? No, it sounds like this would be administrative in nature. No public hearing. As long as the board's okay with that, I mean, you know, they're going to have to authorize the chair to execute a reapproval. Um, and I would just ask if Al and Ernie, you can work to get me some affidavits that, again that just says that uh, this is, you know, the conditions are there are the same that were approved in 2002. Yes, I, I, I'll, we'll work on something this week. I'll get together with Ernie and get it to you. Sounds good. Okay. And then I'm sorry, and maybe Ernie, just make a note on the map that, you know, it's being signed today, but it was uh, based on an approval back in, um, uh, you know, 2002. Okay.
Okay. Um, and as far as erosion control notes and things like that, we're going to leave. I know yeah, we're not gonna you, had, you had recommended or you had that in your letter. We're just going to leave that off. Yes. Yeah, we're going to leave it. Okay. All right. So um, let me ask the uh, the rest of the board members. Are any uh, anybody have any questions or concerns? Uh, as long as it with it, I'm. Was that Ralph? I didn't hear you. No, I have nothing. Oh, I, all right. I thought you said something. Okay. So um, I guess Paul. Then all it takes is for me just to reauthorize it. I just have to get the board to approve that. For me to reauthorize the yep okay so we just need a i guess i just need a motion um i'll yeah, make that motion then chairman reauthorize the uh the previous site plan on the site so ralph made the motion we have a second can i can i just interject one second mr chairman sure. i would just add that on the condition that a affidavit is uh is supplied by uh council's attorney and uh engineer that the conditions are the same as the 2002 site plan. Yes, okay, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> um, okay, so we have that second as yeah. amended there. Okay, uh, all in favor? Who did we get a second from? Paul. I believe Paul. Paul. Thank yep. you. Okay, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, any opposed? Okay, so hearing none, I guess uh, all well, the members voted aye. So this has been a, it's a, have an approval for me to sign it once the, um, uh, once the attorney um, is satisfied with the affidavits that get submitted. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, you're welcome. Right, have a good evening. You too. All right. Um, next item on the agenda this evening is uh, an extension uh, for BAC Properties LLC. They're seeking their sixth one year extension on a site plan approved March 2nd, 2015. Um, they're looking to uh, get an extension granted from March 2nd, 2021 through March 1st, 2022. Of a uh, motion to grant the extension. I'll make that motion. Okay, motion's made. Do we have a second? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, any opposed? Okay, motion carries. Uh, our next extension we have is for Riverview Land Company LLC, uh, seeking their first two-year extension on an amended site plan application and special use permit. Um, they're asking for an extension retroactive back to March 18th, 2020 through March 17th of 2022. Um, do we have a motion to uh, approve this extension? I'll make that. Okay, we have a second. Yeah, I'll second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. Our next item on the agenda here is Chelsea Farm Subdivision. They're seeking their fifth one year extension on a final subdivision approval for Chelsea Farm Subdivision. Uh, they're looking to get an extension retroactively from January 31st, 2021 through January 30th of 2022. Get a motion to approve this extension. So move. Second. Motion's made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Any opposed? All right. Seeing none, the motion carries. Okay, so we're down to the end of the agenda for the evening. Um, one item we do have left to discuss this evening is, are we going to schedule a, um, a workshop session for, uh, I believe it was February, 
17th, I think was the February last day. February 17th. Yep. Um, I believe we're still on for that date with um, the planner and the engineer. Yeah, I can make that. Okay. Yeah, was that supposed to be a joint uh, workshop or something with the town board or no? no? I don't think it's with the town board, but it is to discuss, you know, public infrastructure, sewer, okay. water. All right. Yes, I have it down. Okay. Yeah, because we're going to review the, uh, the infrastructure, I guess, what's available and what's not available throughout the town for uh, future projects. <clears throat> um, do we have any backup information on that? And again, like Barbara, I could be out of the loop because maybe that's something that um, Tom Harvey uh, and Tim are working on. So we've been discussing a lot of different uh, items at the consultant meetings. Right. So some of the things that we were discussing, such as sewer capacity, water capacity, recreation needs, these were some of the items coming out of those meetings that we'll put an agenda together that we want to bring to the planning board's attention as they see new projects coming in. Okay, so that's that's something that you'll work together with our office on to put together something before the meeting? Correct. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, all right. So um, at this point we need to, uh, need a motion to go ahead and schedule the public, uh, schedule the workshop meeting, sorry. I'll make it. Okay, so we have motions made, need a second. Okay, Paul, is that you to made second? Yes. Okay, all right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Bruce? Okay. Yes. Would you like that at six or at seven? Oh, um, yeah, would, is everybody able to make six o'clock for that meeting? Six it is. Yeah, I'm good with six. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thanks. If everybody can make six, that'd be probably a little easier. We don't uh, run too, too late. Is this going to be via Zoom? At this time, I would think so. Okay. Okay. We're going to do a Zoom meeting for this? Unless yeah. something changes in town hall where we're letting the outsiders in. If not, we'll have to stick with Zoom. Okay. All right. I know that David would like to attend, and if it's Zoom meeting, he will be able to attend. Okay. So I guess we're planning on doing it Zoom then. Um, something comes up. All right. So uh, motion was made. Say all in favor. I don't know if, I, if we approve that or not, but. Everybody yeah. was in favor of that? Yes. Okay. So motion carries. So that'll be brings us to the end of the agenda then. If there's nothing else to discuss. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. I will okay. second that motion. Okay. Motion made second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right, we're adjourned. Thank you, everyone.